Drinking from a fountain Born of yesterday Take me where the wild wild lilies go When I didn't know That's the way that it goes Where the wild wild lilies go Even though you own You can tell that you're home Share the wild wild lilies so In the undertow I can follow the glow Where the wild wild lilies go Even though you own You can tell that you're home Oh, now it's my time to shine as we jump into our third and final series of the night. Snake taking on RNG. And RNG have moved away from Beijing to head into the Snake Pit in Chongqing. And for RNG, they are on a roll. For Snake, they want to make sure they secure playoffs, but a loss here could be devastating. The fans have come out in force, but a lot of the time in the Snake Pit, we see that the RNG fans are stronger. Welcome back. My name's Jake Derek Sosipenko, joined by Barento Raz Muhammad. What are you looking for? And are you looking that you're on a different can, seat this time? Exactly. Mm. No Clement too. Ship Clement out. I'm taking his spot. Now I finally get to be color cast. You're, well. you're looking pretty good in that seat, Raz. It's good to be back here for the final series of the day. Snake and RNG, this is one that I guess has a bit of history behind it as well. But one history that repeats here is that RNG, driver's seat, Snake, maybe not much so. Yeah, dr RNG are always finding themselves on a roll when it comes near the playoff times. So I'm never concerned about RNG when they finally get Uzi involved in the in, in the push, when they know their identity is around team fighting, yep. they nail it down time and again. And even though RNG it feels like their identity is slightly changing, but still kind of there to their core purpose with Snake, they are changing one core purpose, and that is Fen Fen coming into the mid lane here Ooh. for his first time in 2019. This one's going to be big for me where... Fen Fen, remember, former Suning mid laner. He was known for his uh, Cassidy. He felt like like if he was on Cassidy, then you were like, dang, he can carry. It really was pretty good too. Yep. But then when he lost those, he was just purely a supportive mid laner. So for him, he came off with Galio at times the Karma. So he was known to being able to protect his jungler. So this is exactly what Snake wanted. They wanted something like this out of Mala to begin with, but they couldn't communicate as well with him. There was a lot of times with the co uh, communication and just champion skill yep. fell to the wayside. At least with Fen Fen, you can get that communication, you can get that supporting style. So this is best of both worlds, where Andy brought in the fact that he's, of course, had the Chinese first language, right. while Mala was the type of player who wanted to be able to back up his uh, jungler a lot of times. So I think this is a big big up for Both this Andy and Mala only have a year of competitive experience yes. as well. With someone like Fen Fen, he's been on Sooning in the past, uh, played on an LDL team with LWX and Crisp at one point as well. Yeah, so I think that for uh, Fen Fen, who's made a bit of a journey here to the LPL, yeah. had his first shot when he was on Sooning. And I think that that was a time where he was finding himself on a rotating roster between him and Dien. And both of them were very obviously at that point uh, at the bottom feeders of the mid lane pool in the LPL. That may not change here, but remember, with Snake, we're in a drastic situation where both of their mid laners just ain't cutting it, mm. and they're not even hitting what the purpose of their compositions are supposed to nail down. Yeah. I think... Fen Fen is that type of player to be able to lock them in and make them a little bit more of a disciplined team. Definitely is. Marla and Andy on that note as well have been picking one or two champions that they excel at. They get banned away and further to the point, they struggle in the mid lane. Now with their third mid laner, Snake, uh, this kind of late into the spring split, 
looking for a stylistic change. But let's go a little bit deeper to okay, this as well, Raz. Right? With Fen Fen, he may have his unique picks, but at least you think there's a bit more versatility there in his champion pool considering on 9.4. So one thing I want to say is that I think versatility is something that will run out very quickly for him. So okay. like I, I talked about those two picks that made him better, mm. as in like the Vladimir and Aurelia, uh, the Cassidy and Aurelia. Yep. But then that's where the buck stops. Because that point forward, he's playing meta champions that were purely supportive style, that mm. didn't provide extra damage. So at that stage for Suning, they were holding themselves into like a very single focus damage composition around Fury at the, uh, uh, along those times. Sure. And at times being able to say, okay, maybe Xiao would be there for, like, for us to carry. So those are the limitations that Suning had at that period with Fen Fen. But he's been growing as a player. He's been away for some time. I want to see what he can bring for the team right now because I do expect more uh, of the same meta options, same stability. Him coming into the mix is more so like, I'm not getting resources. Yep. I'm allowing the other members to get resources more reliably because the players that you should be looking for are still Asura, uh, SOFM, and of course the top side of the map, you got Flandre. Yeah. So Snake may be going back to more of their old play style then yes. with the use of Fen Fen. You're going up against Xiao Hu, who in RNG's favor has been going very, very well recently. RNG just feel like they're on top of the world. And Xiao Hu is having an exceptional split to start off. He definitely is. And he's been getting resources too. Yep. For international audience out there, they look at RNG and they say, okay, well, Jungler is going to start strolling bottom lane. Mm. Hasn't been the case this split. This split, even when Uzi came back, it was pull all the pressure into the mid lane get Xiaohu well and fed, he can do that on his own, but Karsa going back mid lane is also in times, like that's gonna go farther and farther ahead for you. I mean, this was, was beautiful. This yeah, it was absolutely beautiful to watch. Even with a wave coming in, they go at a full HP rise through the wave, get the damage on them, and still both of them come out alive, being able to just get out of tower aggro. At that point, it was rise without a flash, and they continue to bully B. In this case, when they were on Baron, they knew they could not only pick up this one, but also just be able to net the kill on the Lee Sin who was following through. So I really enjoy how RNG can play this one uh, in the laning phase to the team fight. Yep. A lot of times we kind of just hole RNG into this team fighting thing where we just expect them to fall behind early on. But with how Karsa and Shahu have been playing, I expect them to get the early game advantage handily, and I expect them to come in hard for the uh, late game as well. And I want to bring you to a, a bit of a notice here as well, both RNG and Snake playing each other. For the first time here on 9.4 in the single round, Robin. Uh, for Flandre, I always bring up a stat, which uh, I'm going to do again, Raz, why right, not? Show it Hasn't me. missed the game. And of course, with Snake there Eats Boss, Flandre's here again in the top lane, SOFM in the jungle. Fen Fen starting out here for 2019. Ashura and Maestro, your bottom lane. So this team's remained the same, except for that new fame of Fen Fen coming in for the yep. mid lane. And here comes RNG, Amazing J in the top lane, Karsa in the jungle, Shahu in the mid lane, and rounding out that bottom side of the map, Uzi and Ming. What did you say who's holding Raz? Unlimited potential. There's a lot there. In his hands. It just keeps going, getting wider and wider every time we see Xiao Hu. 20 KDA on one of his star picks at the moment. I bring this up because in this meta, Syndra still viable to be picked. We might not see her as often, but he is an absolute monster on this champion out of meta. Yeah, I think Syndra is the type of champion you might not want to see him playing if you're Snake going into this series because Syndra has so much early lane pressure. Snake recognized that, tried to put it on Mala to see if they can get ahead, but he was falling behind so frequently. And so for Snake going into this series, knowing that they're going up against Xiaohu, I'm not expecting them to have Fen Fen, and I don't think they expect <laughs> that Fen Fen will have a lead here. No. I think they just want him to stick to the game plan. Game plan is, Play a Lissandra. Yep. Play, I don't know, I've seen we've seen some Urgot here and there. Corky perhaps. Play something that has pressure and link and mm. scale later on, but primarily push so SOFM can get the job done when he goes in for a Raptor invade. Yeah, opportunities. Yep. That's what we really need to see here from Snake. I think we already saw when, you know, camera walked right by, got a glimpse on Fan Fan who was just laughing it out. So you want to be able to see a player who doesn't have the pressure there. Some people have nervous left, so yep. you can never tell if he's truly nervous or not just based off of body language alone but i want to be able to see what he can do here because fen fen is not the type of player to get a lot of opportunities on that stage yeah true um especially coming off of how he played in suning where people came off of that one just having a sour taste in their mouth thinking that he wasn't up to snuff in the competition in the lpl that's right it's a good re-entry back in into 2019 snake need 
a strong player that can be suitable yes. for the way this roster is going. You don't have Fury and Yoon anymore. You don't have still on Sooning Hype Train. Yeah, you are. With, but like they don't he doesn't have them to really yeah, sure. be the supporting line in the in the side lanes. He has new True. members to support him. And if I'm uh Fen Fen in this situation, I'm a little bit more confident knowing that I have SOFM right behind me. Mm. So I wonder if there's there is any adaptations being made here. Remember we're in a best of three settings, so game one you can play a little bit safe. Uh, I'd love to see what Snake's willing to push out here, knowing that they've had at least a, a, a week of scrims with him, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, and you can never make those assumptions, knowing how, uh, you know, adaptation coming into the team house, making these changes, it seems, on a, fl on a dime. This was announced on Weibo. Um, slowly came out, knowing that Fen Fen was on the roster. And a lot of teams don't make these decisions lightly. No. Snake is the type of team or organization, if they pick up a team and they have some troubles early on, they play it out. But yep. this time around, making this adaptation, they're three and seven in the standings. They know that there is still a chance for them to get into playoffs, but realistically, they got to think about summer split as well. They did. Being able to build your team to be successful for the year, play that long game, and I think this is the right step in doing so. Possibility starts here with RNG, V5, JDG coming up next. Some of the harder matchups, then OMG, LGD. Uh, there's still opportunity for Snake to make that eighth position at the moment, but without top of the pool at the moment in standings. It's very hard for Snake to overcome, but if they can beat RNG, maybe they can beat anyone. There's a lot of big ifs, but if we're talking about top of the pool, RNG is in that list. Mm -hmm. RNG hasn't played as many games as a, a, the, the top of the team. So Invictus Gaming has played, I think two or three more series than RNG. Same goes for Billy Billy, T.O.P. The end of the day, RNG are six and two and it still has a few games to pump out and can very realistically be in that tied position for first place if they continue on the current track that they are on. Six series after this one. This is going to be the first of many. Now, RNG and Snake, let's jump right into it in Snake's home arena. Uh, we'll see what the changes are because tonight already we've seen plenty of Rek'Sai and Kasa even banning that one away, knowing that blue side first pick priority. AD carry bans already, so with how well Asura has been playing, might just focus this one on Perhaps an Ezreal and Callista. Yep. I mean, Callista's already getting banned here, so we'll have to see what Asura picks up for himself. I like the Rise ban targeting towards Xiaohu as well, although he's only played one game of it so far. More targeting there uh, with the LeBlanc as a safe hover, not this round. I like a Galio. I know Galio has been something that it's not a, a, you know, a flex pick any longer. I still love it in the support position. It sets up your composition no matter what you pick coming afterwards. I think it is um, first pickable at the moment during the meta. Yep. Other couple of first picks as well. Um, at the moment, we still see the Zoe heavily prioritized in LPL. Maybe not. That's a Kaisa straight over to Asura. You can tell the strategy there for Snake was take away a lot of the AD carries that do well into the Kaisa. The yeah. Lista and Lucian came to follow. But remember, Tristana's just as good. Nuzi's a wonderful Tristana player. We made a mention of that throughout the day about you know, Tristana being as good as she is. Just takes a lot for a team to be willingly and confident to go right back into the champion after not playing it for so long. Yeah, that's right. Tristana has been picked up by Ashura, but if Uzi picks it up, it feels like a big slap in the face. Same with Ming picking up Alistar as well. One of his signature champions. Ming is so exceptionally beautiful on it. Yeah, his Alistar is wonderful outside of the landing phase where you can just set up so so many plays. I wonder what's going to be paired up with it. Usually, teams want to put their AD carry on, you know, first phase and pick and ban. Especially with Lucian and Kalista already being banned in first phase, you wouldn't want to go into the second phase where that just continues to go flying at you. We got RNG to give him one more chance to get Jarvan onto Kasa, uh, knowing how good Jarvan is at the moment. I'll tell you one thing, a bit of a secret. Oh yeah. What is it? So Snake probably recognizes this, so it's not a secret at all. But Vayne does well with the Cataclysm. Oh, yeah. Vayne does well into Kai'Sa. Uzi's played Vayne in his last series, so. Vayne is something that I would love to see here for RNG. I think it's just a straight good pick. More common than any other region at the moment as well. Everyone else adapting into the Vayne, but uh, we've been seeing it here since patch 9.2 as well. So have we been seeing the Vladimir and Flandre and the Lee Sin. I think they could start to lock in the vein. Obviously, you know, huge win rate on this uh, Zoe at this point, so they're just going to snatch it there for Xiaohu. But 
Usually the vein comes in when they know they have control over the, the support picks. The only th uh, support that you look at and say, I can pick vein into that is the Braum. Braum yep. just doesn't provide the engage. The necessary lockdown on top of a vein to make her feel under threat. And so, I mean, maybe they can still go at that and go into second phase. Uzi's feeling comfortable with that. Yeah, he really is. The Jace band showing that they're not going to ban the form away, just leaving it open for Snake. Uh, with the Zoe as well, still an incredible time here in both the LPL and for Xiaohu's wheelhouse. Only lost one game out of five on it. And RNG's mid laner just continues to impress. And we'll see Snake are just moving towards the second band phase with a Yorick to open us up. Top lane priority here. Of course, a flex there for the Jace, but uh, still fits into the same area. Amazing Jay is going to the Yorick a lot. Can yep. be a band-aid to him where he doesn't want to necessarily join the team fights and wants to just create as much pressure as humanly possible on his own. And the York is able to accomplish that and has so many good lanes here. Remember, Vladimir is a real tough... Like, Vladimir does not want to go up against York. Yep. It's a tough matchup for him, and you got to see it early on today. So, recognizing that Amazing Jay has that in his champion pool, a good way to strike it out. Another champion that he's been picking up very regularly is the Poppy 2. The final ban will be exactly that from Snake. Yeah, calling it out. Both picks that Amazing Jay's been so strong on. He's been forced out. But he knows, at least for, like, well enough that Fen Fen is not going to go towards the Vladimir. Wonder if Amazing J is going to pick up something that can have a carry threat. Yeah. Like, Kennen has been an option here into the matchup, so he still has last pick opportunity. We'll see what Uzi Ooh. picks for himself. What is it yeah, just be lock the it vein. in. Yeah, as you saw this coming, and the audience loves it as well. Seeing Uzi's vein is like going to Disneyland on a Monday. Yep. And everything is open. Everything is open. And that's what the lane could be if Uzi has his El Clasico in that bottom line. I think the only thing that I'm afraid of is a Galio support pickup here for Snake, where I think that's a great way to shut her down. Galio taunt flash on top of her head. Yep. But Snake looking at this and picking the Braum anyway. So that's what I was afraid of, where, sure, Braum has great lockdown if you, you know, can pump in the auto attacks to put her down. The slow to set up for a gank, but... What I'm worried about is the fact that you can go into your final hour, really buy enough time for the proc to leave off you, and you just have that mobility. Yep. The mobility is all I really care about, so give me a hard CC to nail her down. Let's well, add a bit more there if you snake as well. They're hovering over the Aswe, but they do eventually decide on the Aatrox, considering we've seen so much Aatrox already in the LPL on this new patch. I'm just going to lock her in. We're seeing a lot of Aatrox jungle, obviously. There's a lease in here. So yep. Aatrox to be going... Like the end of mm, I wonder, this could be a oh. Vladimir mid lane. So we get to see a yeah. great flex pick here where Fen Fen has the opportunity of either going Aatrox or the Vladimir. I think the Vladimir into the Zoe is fairly fine. Mm -hmm. Like you have two escape options. The first one is the cleanse that he's holding on to, and of course the pool that he has whenever he gets sleepy trouble bubbles. So it's a safe matchup. It's just the option that he's going the cleanse instead of the teleport, which means that his bot lane is vulnerable when RNG gets a push on mid. So I want to be able to see what Snake can do when they're the ones that are reacting to play. Yeah, on the other side of the coin, Flandre on the Aatrox going up against the cannon. See what amazing Jay J takes in the rune set. As that 20 seconds comes down, it will be the final lock-in. Uh, in the past, seen a lot of klepto cannon, but into this matchup, you never know, you could see the phase rush more aggressive option for some of these team fights later as well. But RNG, almost the more El Clasico composition here that we see. And, uh, of course, seeing Casa on the Java just simplifies it a bit. That's a, that's cannon, right? To make sure. Well. Yep, it is a cannon. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I like, I didn't expect Amazing J to be coming out with the cannon pick. So even though I mentioned it being just a classic matchup into the Vladimir, still pretty decent into the Aatrox as well. Yep. So he ends up getting what is likely the best laning option where he's been struggling as a laning phase player. I think Amazing Jay has been wonderful in the in the team fights, but in the laning phase, Amazing Jay hasn't been stellar. I want to see what kind of advantage he can eke out for himself. It's hard when RNG are playing so well too. And for Amazing Jay to be the weakest member on the roster, to put it plain and simple, the development of this top laner makes you think, all right, if Amazing Jay is able to quell this laning phase and simplify it for himself, then you have five strong members who go into potentially mid-season invitational, who potentially go even, let's go simpler, to playoffs with that ideology that RNG have everything sorted out. At this point, we're just getting right into it. For RNG, I mean, they just need to hit early and help out Shahu. 
Let's see. Going into game one in the Snake Pit RNG. Away from home. But the style remains the same. Heavy hearts here for Snake. To make playoffs. The journey begins now. Now, a few people picked Zoe and hurt her win rate. Oh. Last time I looked at it, it was a 70, I mean, it was an 80% win rate. Yep. Now it's 77. Ooh. What can you do, man? It's going up. It's really rough as well. It's been picked 39 times. <laughs> and has a 77% win rate. Zoe's <laughs> only going to help that out. Yeah. I noticed that LeBlanc as well is actually sitting pretty good. Uh, about 62%. That's true. That's true. Uh, Shea would have lowered that, unfortunately, but still. I don't blame him. No. Yeah, very different story with WA. Uh, with Snake trying out the new mid laner. Going to be Phase Rush on the Vladimir in the mid lane. You see Airy on Xiaohu. Uh, that Electrocute that we saw the other day. And even Conqueror on Lee Sin on SOFM. I'm about point like that, because I think Electrocute is just better for the Lee Sin. Now, we've yeah. had our discussions what Conqueror is going to accomplish here, but... Lee Sin's primarily just in and out. Look for the assassination. You know, use his kick, full burst on a target. In this case, I would say as an example, Xiaohu. Yep. But going towards the Conquerors, I would say, is expecting him to be in a, in a longer skirmish fight. He's picking off Ming, Karsa being probably the best uh, example of that. And he knows very likely that it's going to be a, a Conquerors on the Jarvan as well. So it's fun to be going into this game and already getting a focus on these new runes and yeah, it's not the only one though. You see Comet on Flandre in the Aatrox top. Uh, kind of gives you an indication of how things have changed there, but we'll see what the sub runes are as well. Going for the overheal on the Lee Sin. Electrocutes want to just gonna want to get into their face, and primarily in the mid lane when you get these small skirmishes, he knows he loses that top lane. Yeah. So just being able to trade damage from afar, you love to see those adaptations. That's the one that I, I appreciate, and I think it's beneficial to him. This is usually, uh, you know, difficult. If in this case, just knowing that SOFM probably doesn't have a good idea that this is happening here. Yep. Garza just counter, like going for a vertical jungling, and Lee Sin hasn't already been topside to look to try and take away some camps in the enemy blue side jungle. It's going to be easier for Uzi and Ming to deny him now that they're focusing on pushing out the lane. You saw the pathing around Scuttle as well. Instead of going back into his jungle, rotates all the way around to see if there's any wards towards the bottom side. Picks up Krugs and is now situated down there. And uh, SOFM might find this out the hard way, or he might take an inkling. This is damaging. Take a look where Zoe is going. Really early on, level three. Such a quick roam. Flandre is in a deficit with the minions crashing in as well. You have no idea this is happening, but you better. Troll Bubble doesn't land. Flandre just walks out of it. RNG, can they even follow this up? Yeah, it's going to be hard. Three minions here to work with, and it's uh, going to all be on whether Shahu has the Sleepy Trouble. Amazing Jay's taking turret aggro. Flandre doesn't stand a chance. He takes one more turret shot, and it's not enough. First blood to RNG. Wonder if he's going to teleport right back three seconds in. I guess the minion wave is completely dying here, so he should feel safe. It's always the risk of a re-engage, but well done by RNG. Another early dive that they employ, and they get the kill. I Means this time, Flandre or SOFM knows that his jungle uh, has been taken on the other side and reacts accordingly. It's just been a hard life here for SOFM. Yep. The fact that only now he ends up going into the blue side jungle because he gets an idea of where Jarvan is, but it's one of those situations where it's just too late. Uh, it's not a proper trade. Maybe he can look for a bottom lane fight, but we're dealing with a Braum lane. So, uh, at best, it's flash on me. Yep. Uh, that, that's what I'm... At worst, it's a turned around gank because Maestro is... I don't know, this is going to be hard. I mean, going up with Uzi Ming in this situation, always difficult to force a gank in that point. Surprising that he picked up the Brom. Now, further to your point in Champ Select, uh, just to add another layer on top of it, make sure he's been picking up the Fresh, but we'll just take a look backside first, or top side. It's Flandre almost survived, I guess. Waiting for the full, you know, the wave to come in to support them. They knew that they had just the raw damage to join up on that one. Even the stun coming in from Kennen and the, you know, the Jarvan knockup. Oh, we're going again, right? Wow. <laughs> Xiaohu doesn't even leave time. SOFM caught out right underneath the mid lane turret. What the hell happened there? How did he 1v2? Garza wasn't even involved. Nor Let's was Fen Fen. Look, we just need to get into this replay inception where we replay the last replay. Yeah. You know, there's going to be a fight while we're replaying the last one. That's what I enjoy. I know what's going to happen.
We've been lulled into thinking. No, Jarvan's going in for. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Xiaohu hit level 6 as well. So now we've started. We've got a Zoe who's 1 0 and 1 in the win rate. Remember, look how high it is. Ask yourself why. And this might give you an answer. Oh, he was contesting the Raptors, oh. and he ends up picking up Lee Sin. How close he was he to just going for the full 100 to 0? <laughs> Level yeah, 5! He flashed underneath to get the <laughs> extra bit of damage. Level 5, Zoe! It's pretty insane. With zero items, top lane again, Amazing J, double really? flash. Caster didn't communicate that one across because Amazing J already left the play. Flandre uh, does not have the ultimate available, Caster neither, and Amazing J will pop his. That's a big commitment there from ROG. I will say, I feel sad for Flandre. He's losing so many minion waves because he's just getting bullied here from Carsa. Yep. Carsa's known, man. He just, he picks a lane and he hurts it. Last time around it was doing, but he was feeling the pain. Now it's uh, Flandre who's just receiving so many ganks that right now Kennen is just so far ahead. At least there's a cloud right there, so uh, whether he's faster to get into the fight or faster to get away. Should help out this top laner, but maybe not the mid laner, Fen Fen. Half health again. Winning in the top side, winning in the mid lane with the jungle coming in, and now maybe the bottom lane condemned away is Ashura, but they turn on to Ming. Concussive blows land, killer That's instinct as damage. well. It is, but Uzi's already traded back onto Maestro. But guess who heard the calls of that one? Xiaohu. The pains, the cries of Maestro and Asura. You better believe Xiaohu's coming in. Here comes the portal jump, flash and heal. So much expended, so scared here in the bottom lane. Ben Ben wants to join. But he, he has no clue where they are. Look, this is the struggle. If you are a cleansed Vladimir and your jungle has been picked apart, what can you really do? Ordinarily, Fen Fen would... Oh, no, please don't hit it. He almost walked into that as well. Sonic Wave lands on the castle. Remember, he has ultimate available. When does he use it, if ever? Straight on to SOFM, but three members coming in. The flag and dragging out. Fen Fen picks up the first kill and RNG. Lose that jungler from an overcommit. That's what you want if you're Snake. Because I was just talking about how hard this game is going to be for Fen Fen to try and help bottom lane for, you know, while Zoe's rotating, while still picking up the mid lane wave. This time around, they end up picking up on Karsa, but Xiaohu is relentless. Please stop this man. He's been spotted out by a wall this time, though. Xiaohu's like, where is it? Why, do, that, why does he keep playing back? <laughs> it, it wasn't in the hmm. pixel brush, hmm. it was just an inkling. Yeah, just the gut feeling by Flandre. He's still going to die for this. <laughs> he knows exactly where it is. Level 6. You're going to have to pop the World Ender. The Klepto Cannon ready to pounce as well. Flandre will take all of the procs again. Pops the World Ender, but is slowed on up. When does he die? Amazing J deciding his fate. Fem Fem will... Oh, Flandre will just walk away. It's like seeing Mr. X walking through the CCTV cameras. And you can't do anything about it. <laughs> you can't call the police. You can't... You know, pick up a crowbar and hope for the... You can't do a damn thing. Flandre sees what's coming from him, but what can he do to stop it? Absolutely nothing. He brings his jungler in just to clear the wave and get him off the turret. Flandre has to back yet again in this game. Is 20 CS behind. And there's a Seeker's armor guard there. There is no damage coming out of that Caulfield's Warhammer that Flandre has gone into. And at this point, you're saying, all right, well, do we start picking up a Hex Drinker? Do we look for more defensive options just to get through this laning phase? I mean, it's possible, but at this point, RNG's been speeding up the process of this game. Yeah, Zoe's been constantly looking at shove and early on looking for top lane push. But very easily, that's going to segue into a bottom lane focus because build rod and cutlet being picked up by Uzi is significant. Yep. Much easier to look for a gank when you not only have the Alistar running around with some uh, grade one Nikes. <laughs> But, of course, the slow that uh, the Vayne can actually en end up putting on top of you, too. Great frame placement there as well. Ming clearing out vision, that's all he needs to do with it at the moment. Xiaohu's picked up blue, that's a nightmare for Fen Fen. Uh, has redemption as well, at 9 minutes in the game. Nothing about this for Snake is good. No. Somehow Vayne has 96 minions underneath her, going up against yeah. uh, Kai'Sa. I mean, Kai'Sa's been pressure under tower a little bit, but that's perfect CS 90, 9 minutes into the game. Remember, yeah, supports aren't even in the lane. They're fighting again. This is going to be a trouble level from Xiao, who kicked back by SOFM. Xiao, who's going to drop down here. Him and Plague should burn him down, but he does a bit of damage before going down. Kai'Sa goes as well. Uzi joining the fight. This is a 2 versus 4. SOFM forces the flash out Woo! of Ming. He's got him. Condemn away. Where's the resonating strike? SOFM doesn't take it, nor does he need to. He's He's gotten kills, he's gotten the Infernal Dragon under his grip. Big brain there. He actually just won them out that fight. Excellent kick on top of Xiaohu following him through. Xiao doesn't even, like, didn't know how to deal with it. And then being able to just follow up. I thought that that was the best uh, skirmish or team fight we've seen from SOFM yep. the last few series. 
Very fair to say, it's been a rough road for Snake so far, and it's been uh, ever so pressing that Snake have only picked up three wins yeah. in the LPL so far. Uh, one was against EDG at the start of the split, but since then, the downhill roll, this is not one of them in Take this fight. look at it. Starts with Ming. They're like, okay, maybe we can you know, pile up some Braun passes on him. They see Lee Sin a little bit too late, even with the headbutt ball rush coming through. And then tags Xiaohu, gets the kick on him, even with the knockup on top of Ming. Like, SOFM picks his next target on Karsa as well. I, I, like, he just played that one so well, and the lanes collapse just in time. Yeah. This margin's kind of back to even as well. You've got two kills now on Fen Fen. Uh, bringing in this mid laner for his first game of the LPL in this year. Looking so good. far, so good. That's right. Uh, a lot better experience than what we've seen in the early game from Marla and Andy. Uh, hopefully this continues on. Snake were looking towards the mid once again with SOFM. Trying to find the pick onto Casa. Ooh, he's he's never left. He yep. never left. <laughs> I just love the movement some champions make. Oh my god. Shao just gets it idea. out. You're not going anywhere. Ming even picks up the kill. Cataclysm's down as well. Was just praising Fen Fen, but unfortunately he's walked too far forward. The cleanse with the ignite won't cut it here as Casa secures two kills for RNG. They had a pretty damn good idea he was in the bush. Throws the sleepy trouble bubble. That was sick. I mean what can you really do? Throw your hands up and just wait it out. Yep. And the SOFM, as he comes back, he'll realize what his mistake has cost, what RNG's placement has cost them. An Infernal Drake, uh, match that against the Cloud. And you say, happy to take the Infernal here if you're RNG. Definite stat boost. And what happens mm -hmm. when you roll the dice? What's the next one going to be? All right, that's wow. for you, Snake. <laughs> you can take that, that one. We'll leave the sloppy seconds to Snake there. <laughs> All right. SOFM. No vision, but they had a good idea. Remember, Fen Fen had left the bush itself, and he's been working real closely with uh, with Lee Sen, so they had a pretty good idea it was in the bush. A good estimation that ends up picking up two uh, kills there for RNG. Fen Fen was hoping he could get something off of Xiaohu. Unfortunately, stepping far forward means that he gets picked up as well. First death of the game. Still, Fen Fen is a, a threat, has the Proto Belt before Xiaohu has the Luden's Echo. That doesn't mean Vladimir is going to do more damage than a Zoe. Of course it doesn't. Uh, RNG, of course, 3,000 gold ahead at 13 minutes in the game. You know where the gold is, though? Where is it? Look at the top lane. A Klepto Cannon that got ahead early is still ahead now. Who would have thought? Oh my god. That's pretty sad. I mean, literally, like, so close to being a 2k gold lead. 13 minutes into the game. And Vayne is picked up. A gold bounty while not picking up a single damn kill. Just through minions alone. 137 minions. Yeah. 13 minutes into the game. Uzi sticking with his highest CS a minute in the league. Has an average of 10.4 CS a minute. Absolutely insane. He's going to get more down in the bottom lane. They're racing for first turret here after getting the plating off and disappearing some of that gold into the members of Snake. But Uzi pushing hard with Ming. This is going to go down first. A snake raced, but didn't win. Yeah, I mean, they were already on the bot side of the map, and it was Asura and Maestro that elected to leave the lane. They didn't want to deal with the matchup first and foremost, and wanted to open up the match. That's not necessarily bad. I mean, more gold is flowing through RNG. Good to have a try. But having an open lane is still pretty beneficial for what's a 1-3-1 on Snake's side. So, yep. RNG want to clump up. Okay. How does that hit? Oh, the puddle's there. No. Now who almost times it. But there's nothing you can do, Fed Fed. Scared in this mid lane. I would be too. I would be too. What makes, can you do? Makes perfect sense. You've got Luden's Echo now picked up for Xiaohu. Almost level 11, so the portal drop cooldown is going to get lower very shortly. And even with the Vladimir, it's just not working out right now. RNG still confident the mid lane turret seems to be the next objective uh, as it keeps getting pushed in by Xiaohu and sure has been set mid. So something so people to take note of, as you already saw, the Q's been evolved from Kai'Sa. In the past, and by the past, I mean 9.2, mm -hmm. you would be getting your Q at level 12. Yeah. Because that's when your base stats would be online, when you've already gone towards the Storm Razors and all that nonsense. Like, now you're going Infinity Edge, baby. You got that BF Sword double pickaxe where you can get that literally level 9. Yeah. So, like, that's a real fun thing. It does mean that your uh, E Evolve, which goes gets you invisible, is not the first thing that gets evolved, but I actually personally love that over Q Evolve. Mm -hmm. But that just means you have an extra bit of wave clear there. 
just right. And if you get it on a solo target as well, at this point, Uzi, half his health pretty much as well. Even with double pickaxe and the BF sword. Uh, Shura and Maestro, gonna test that theory out for us as well. But Xiaohu's coming in from the side. Azura has to flash, trouble level lands again. Xiaohu's going in for a second run, but it's just the mid wave this time. But a summoner simply because Xiaohu is being Xiaohu. Just a, just a warning shot. Yep. You know, next time that sleepy trouble bubble will mean something. That's the scariest thing about the Zoe players in our league. That they just keep hitting them. You ask yourself why, but they've played this champion so often that you just have to respect it. No vision there and was close enough if uh, he kept walking up. So he has a good idea where champions are even outside of vision. Four and one on Zoe so far for Xiaohu. Trying to make it another. Rift Herald will be taken here to implement maybe a bit of that engage or set up another turret. Uh, Snake trying to get the pick off the back of Rift Herald, but they move mid. Bit of a congregation here, potentially to move that mid lane turret out of existence. This is what I want to see from RNG. A team that when they go to international events, they oftentimes just pull so much of resources and damage on towards uh, Uzi. This time around, Ooh. one of those resources, amazing yeah. is getting caught out. Classic Maelstrom flashes as well, Sonic Wave, but no follow up there. It's a summoner and an ultimate from Amazing J. And Teleport so he might not be able to join this fight. As Uzi's popped the final out onto Flandre, he can't take the fight himself. Remember Comet and no item on the Aatrox. He's about to expire as well. So. Uzi's flashing, wait for it. Silver bullet. And Flandre tries to get the Infernal Chains, but Uzi even heals forward. He wants Flandre badly, and he'll take him down quite easily. Plays that one so well. Even had to heal to give himself the extra movement speed to get out of Ethereal Chains, I think it's called. Yep. My well, god, Infernal thank Chains, you. same thing. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, that's alright. Oh no. I just said that was an easy kill for Uzi. We all make mistakes. Ah, uh, you know, I'm getting better, closer and closer to reaching that play-by-play -play dream. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Quick pick off there for the mid lane target. Quick pick off, or rather a longer one there from Uzi. Getting his first kill of the game. You saw RNG opening that mid lane turret against Snake. Got a 4k gold lead, 17 minutes in the game. RNG still playing to their form against the uh, Chongqing favorites. Favorites? Yeah. Favorites in the sense that people love them, yeah. but not favorites in the matchup. That's right. Uh, and for Snake right now, they're just kind of waiting on Asura to be able to pick Red up his Rage Blade. That's down. their one hope. And from that point forward, then they can look towards Fen Fen, who ideally would want to get Morello's and Rabadon's death cap. They have a pretty damn good composition of the game goes late. RNG are just bridging themselves so nicely. Shaohu so far has been a beast alongside Karsa. And you're starting to really see Uzi get to the point. He already has Gunblade. All hope is lost. I thought he had some time before he ended up picking it up, but he's been farming up at such an uh, insane rate. Yeah, he's half an item ahead of Asura, but to the 2v2 point, we've seen so much of it so far from Karsa and Xiaohu. And this game seems to be the same, except Xiaohu's just been moving around himself. Karsa's always been there. Doesn't feel like the FPX feeling, but uh, with RNG, it continues to be this 2v2 duo in the mid and jungle that are supplementing a lot of these fights, especially at 18 minutes in the game. We expect Baron to be coming up soon. If he doesn't arrive at 120, I think we'll have to call someone. Uh, as Rift Herald comes down as well, we wait for one of those iconic fights from RNG. All right, in the bottom lane, and what it'll do is it'll allow them to you know, have an extra push in the bot lane. They've had Vayne, who's been on side lane for a little bit. Snake. They're actually, coming. Yeah, they need to do something about this. They were pinging around, they were committing for mid lane turret. A bit of confusion as to what to do. And because of that, the inhibitor turret is just going to go down very easily there from RNG. Yeah, we take those. And if you look mid, SOFM was trying to get mid all the way pushed in. Just so in case you know they take that bot lane turret, that they wouldn't be able to segue that towards the mid lane turret. But remember, realistically, with the information that RNG was working, that they could actually move towards the inhibitor itself. So that's a really dangerous game to play. That's right. You see the new mid laner maybe impact there from oh, lack no. of communication. Flandre might be thrown in as well. He's 0 and 2, still doesn't have his first item. RNG will not leave him alone. The World Ender sends him the other way. That's just his own doing, of course. Uzi for another, and RNG, there's an open in no, here. Asura. Why not pick it up? Or maybe pick up the AD carry. Asura taking off the Summoner's Rift. Xiaohu makes Zoe look like it's so easy, but is it really? Yes, it might be. RNG pick up the inhibitor too. Snake are getting clowned around the map. Yeah, I don't know, there's no other way to put this. <laughs> Across the map, they are finding problems around what is a heavy stronghold in the bottom lane. That red side jungle has actually just given them so much. 
So it starts with this one. They move from the red side jungle down to the bot lane. Flandre wanted to get a push onto this one wave before he heads back to base. He's probably close to another item. Not good enough. You have no one there to protect you. And so that's an easy kill. But then you move to the top side of the red side jungle because it's all control worded, baby. And that ward right in the middle of the, the lane as well. Easy pick on towards the Sura. <laughs> That is a 101 of how to control red side jungle, except for maybe the double control ward in that push. Yeah. I love how this game started with heavy talks about Amazing J. His lane was prioritized at one point by Kasa and Xiaohu. How do you fix your weakest lane as lane? Send members up to the top side. You do that. Get them in there. Yeah. Maybe play around Xiaohu a little bit more after that, as they're doing right now. He's just found another sleep control for Old Main Throws, altered into the middle of wave. It's now Uzi's turn to shine as he plays down from Venpen, but the trouble bubble again. The flag and drags in, and this is just the pile on from RNG. Venpen flashes, but he walks back in, snipes away, and RNG making this look beautiful in transition to the Baron. Yeah, it didn't even matter that the first paddle star probably hit the Raptor camp. <laughs> All that matters is the fact that there's just way too much damage piling through and the Cataclysm works so well with the ultimate that Kennen provided. So, easy pick up of the Baron you would have to expect here from RNG. You want to get out of the fight before Xiaohu even gets in. And Xiaohu started off that fight. Snake just, looking down yeah. the barrel of a game one. Yeah, it's hard, man. It's mm. difficult. Uh, please help, Karsu, there. Yeah, thank you. It's hard because... If you're going into this stage of the game, you do want to be able to find someone you can focus on. In this case, it would be Xiaohu. But Xiaohu's been getting to you first every time. Dipping in and outside of the red side jungle, able to just throw and nail you with the sleepy trouble bubble. So, at this point, if you're Snake, you just have to sit, pray, farm underneath your uh, towers, inhibitor towers most likely. Yeah. And then try and find your way in. I haven't seen the Colonel give us a 92% in some time. I don't think I've ever seen that. Seen in 96. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. Can't quote the game. All I know is I remember. I've actually been around a lot of games recently. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> I tried to put you on break. I gave, I casted the last two seasons. And I, I went and watched it in the crowd instead. Yeah, you don't know the definition of off time. No. It's like, I'll join you guys this morning. I'll come <laughs> and wake up and I'll join you to know what the hell. <laughs> relax. I did relax. I enjoyed FPX and TOP. Okay, that's that, was a, that was a good matchup as well. That's fair. The difference between this one is that at the moment Snake have struggled to find traction. You can see the interchangeability of their mid laners so far. Again, no, don't do this, SOFM. Andy, try SOFM. Why? Maybe we're going to take you out. But no, of course not. Uh, what SOFM was the purpose? He just wanted to face check. He blast cone. Yeah. That is one way to face check. Is you just blast yourself over the wall. <laughs> Maybe he's making a point. That's a strong point. <laughs> it's a very strong point. Tyrus going to go down the top side too, Raz. At this point, RNG just taking everything before they move towards the base. Get those three waves of supers coming oh, in. Oh, he coming! But Ming just charges towards the Shura. Where's Xiaohu, though? On the side wave by himself. Level 15 to Fen Fen's level 14. Fen Fen uh, has no MR. He's going to die. Fan Fan is going to deal with something even worse than that if he doesn't leave that tower very soon. That's going to be the next target. Ming's is going to be wrapping around. He really likely. wants to say this. RNG know that he does. Xiaohu looks for the trouble bubble. Zodes off Fed Fed again. They've got to choose when to go in. That's their third inhibitor going down. So when? SOFM, what about now? What's going to happen? Okay. He's already locked down. Locked down again. What did I say? Locked down one more time. The slicing maelstrom. Amazing J. Comes in for the final hurrah. Ming's here as well. Remember, his Alistar is such a pain, but even more so in game one. The most painful thing as Uzi picks up his double is the fact that Xiaohu got his Zoe, and Zoe in the LPL is absolutely busted. I think Xiaohu's busted. I think both of them, great relationship. Zoe and Xiaohu looking good together. The fact that Xiaohu can come online on any champion and make them look damn good. And it's a it's already a pretty damn strong champion. Oh yeah. So well done for RNG. They won through mid lane. And it just felt so oppressive and Snake didn't respect it. They didn't respect it when uh, Flandre pushed out that extra bit of wave in the bottom lane. They didn't respect it when SOFM blast coned over the, uh, for the, <laughs> the train. But who knows why? That R and RNG stands for respect. <laughs> Give it to them. And that was never given. Yeah, that's right. Snake, 
are on the verge of taking another loss, but I can say this about RNG. Their road to playoffs look so nice. It's not even about strength of schedule at this point. It's the fact that RNG are performing very nice. Yeah, they are the strong schedule. If mm -hmm. you go up against them, your schedule is bad. That's uh, right. And, I mean, the damage was there for Xiaohu. I think Xiaohu, we keep talking about, they had a really good early portion of the game. He got kicked once, but I think that just goes to show the mechanics there for SOFM. And if they are there, if the, main, if the members of Snake are locked onto the play, Snake can win those fights. And we got to see one moment, and that was the case. And I think that Snake could look at that game and say, Fen Fen was ahead? Yeah. That's nice. Uh, the only problem was that our lanes were starting to really lose. Like, top lane got bullied. Flandre had a really harsh experience in the top side of the map, having yeah. people just dive him repeatedly. And then bottom lane, almost nothing happened. Like, sure, there was uh, Zoe great. roaming to the bottom lane once, and then it just goes right back uh, to the mid lane. And then you look back, it's like, that's a huge CS advantage for the Vang that's only getting worse. And then he comes bottom lane, when it just is at the point where you can break it. Yeah, that's true. So it's fantastic. You know, pick up some turret plating, more gold for RNG, the mid laner of RNG. However, uh, we put this forward, and I want to reiterate on this just a little bit and get your opinion here, okay. uh, on how we're playing around Xiaohu for RNG, or if the style has changed that much that it's worth talking about in Week 7. I think that... I always criticize RNG because it felt like this was the case last year. Last year's RNG wasn't an RNG that played towards one point of the map. It only yeah. happened in the international event. I just want to see RNG keep to this and keep Xiaohu to be like, champion him yeah. going into playoffs. So you don't change everything when it's a pressure situation. People don't always rate him as a mid laner and that is wrong. One of the top mid laners in the LPL. Game one for RNG showed that. We'll see if game two and that Zoe is let through once again. Zhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhizhiz
，我感应到又一枚符文了。走，马上。我们走，我们走。符文在召唤，这就对了。<笑>我已经参透了符文，我感到力量的涌动，刀光剑。能奈我何？但牺牲掉的是远古龙的血量，远古龙血量下了三千四百血，非常危机，一触即发的状态。远古龙再度回血啦！这时候又来一个 TP， 应该是 AJ 的 TP 将会到场，而另你输了。TP 将会到场，而另一边三六九还在复活中，马上 TP 到场，但另一边卡萨前面秒了，这波远古龙怎么说？正面战场上面，卡萨的冲锋甲被打了下来，但另一边熊兽已经打掉远古巨龙，而另一边三六九到场，直接绕后 ，UZI 倒了。啥？你想看魔术？一切化为乌有，不过一瞬之间。这一波剩下的应该是蓝色方的一个追角战了。那既然拿下了远古巨龙，后续的战斗他们就没有不赢的道理。以意志之名。现在才是开始。